In this episode, I'd like to explain to you why does this cube control plugin mechanism exist in the first place and why haven't so many people developing plugins? The first reason is that people want new functionality and new source of commands in cube control all the time. You gotta remember that cube control is by far the most popular interface for Kubernetes. Ever since cube control was developed, people have been asking for a bunch of features left and right. Here are some example issues that I've taken from GitHub for you. These issues illustrate that people genuinely take the time and make a feature request because they need this functionality right in kube control. But that doesn't mean that we can do all these things in kube control core all the time. That's why plugins are a good idea. The second reason I want to talk to you about is the fact that there is simply no size that fits all. Everybody has a slightly different opinion on how we should be doing things. And kubectl tries to provide a common baseline that everybody can benefit from. So for example, I would like to talk to you about kubectl logs command. This logs command is something that we all use to, you know, stream logs from Kubernetes pods. So I want to quiz you on something. How many tools do you think the community has developed to do this simple task of viewing logs, but slightly differently? The answer is way too many to count. Most of these popular log tailing tools do the same thing, but they serve different purposes and have different styles of doing things. And that is okay. There's a reason why these projects exist and they're popular. The third reason I'm going to talk about is going to be similar to the previous one. And that is, it's hard to get everyone to agree on something in the open source. And I want to lead with a personal example. So there is this issue on GitHub that is opened by my ex colleague Cole in 2016. It proposes that we make kube control pick up the current context and the namespace from some environment variables. Sounds simple, right? After three years of deliberation, this issue actually was closed with a, you know, one fix. We're not going to do it. Because kube control has other ways of doing the same thing already. You might see this as a slowness in open source community or a problem with the project. I don't think so. This is because kube control already has a way of doing it and that's fine and it is consistent within itself. However, I see an opportunity. So from this issue, I have developed kubectx and kubeNS the most starred kubectl tools on GitHub. This repo has over 7,300 stars right now. It does things a little differently than kubectl, but it's still useful enough to have tens of thousands of active users. So this is a good example of what a plugin might be. The fourth reason I'm going to talk about is rather about the Kubernetes project philosophy. And that is, we cannot solve everything in Kubernetes core. If you're new to the Kubernetes community, you should probably know that Kubernetes has no desire to solve every problem for everyone. It provides a solid but extensible core so that the community can go and build their tools around it. To do this, we have extension mechanisms all over Kubernetes and kube control is no exception. Just like how we can go and develop your networking plugins, storage plugins, write your own APIs, customize the scheduler, you can actually extend the Kubernetes client kube control too. The fifth reason that plugins exist is that you can actually move faster than Kubernetes core yourself. Let me explain. Every kube control release is tied to a Kubernetes release. And as you might know, Kubernetes releases happen every few months. To be part of kube control, there are a lot of roadblocks that you need to overcome. First of all, you need to make a Kubernetes enhancement proposal and get approved. Then you have to write your code in Go, because that's what the Kubernetes code base is in, right? And then you have to be consistent with the rest of kube control. Finally, it can take potentially over a year to go from being an alpha command that is hidden to a stable command that exists for years to come. The sixth reason is that you can be more creative outside the kube control source tree. What I mean is that kube control has a certain way of doing things. It has a particular format. For example, the way it prints out output like tables or the way it accepts configuration. These are consistent within kube control, but this might be limiting your ideas and your users. To illustrate this, I want to show you some plugins. For example, on the bottom left, you're going to see output from a plugin called tree. I wrote this plugin and it shows Kubernetes resources in a tree view based on the ownership relationships. Kube control does not normally do that. By writing this plugin, I now give the users a different view of their Kubernetes resources. On the top right, you're going to see a different plugin called XS Matrix. This plugin has a lot of users too. And as you can imagine, this format of showing RBAC bindings with colorized outputs in a matrix view, it just does not belong on kube control core. And that is fine. That's why you can go 
and develop a plugin to implement your own ideas. Finally, the last reason we want to have plugins is that we want to allow safe experimentation. For example, once Cube Control adds a feature, it goes through a multi-year cycle to remove it. Deprecating things in Cube Control are really painful because once it's there, people are going to write scripts that depend on it for many years to come. So Korea's project wants people to develop plugins and experiment with all these interesting ideas and graduate the successful plugins into the core. To give you an example of this safe experimentation, take kubectl debug as an example. We have two competing plugins with the same name that let you attach a pod's namespace and debug the container that you just deployed. They have different approaches of doing this, but we incorporated ideas from both, and now we actually do have a kubectl debug command that is in kubectl core. This is an alpha command for now, but you don't have to install the plugin separately anymore. Because as a community, we learn from the success of these plugins and we combine the ideas from those in the Cube Control core. I hope it's clear to you now that there's a need for an extension mechanism in Cube Control. If anyone tells you that they don't understand why Cube Control plugins exist, send them to this video. I hope you subscribe and stay tuned because in the next episode, we're going to be talking about Crew, the plugin manager for Cube Control.